quite fancy. Oh, fabulous. Yeah, nice drink. Oh, it looks great. Well done. I'm really pleased to see. The challenge we had was that there's a lot of people in the area that were isolated. There was a loss of connectivity and community. As a result of that, we saw lots of decline in mental health and we felt that there were a lot of different people that had a lot to share and creativity and wellness tended to be something that was cropping up a lot. It means quite a lot to me personally because I've lived here, it was really welcoming to an outsider. The high street was really thriving and over the last 15-20 years I've seen Army really massively decline. I work in areas affected by poverty and I see this incredible community spirit. Let's be honest, in terms of climate change, we're not heading in a very good direction. So uh, learning of the skills, how to reduce, to reuse, to repair, these are the essential elements that are absolutely required for creating a future that we want to live in. There's huge trust barriers to overcome here. This is not just about Solterre. If you want a national retrofit of the private market, someone is going to have to get out into these communities. The only thing that's putting foreign direct investment into this country is urban land markets and that drives gentrification, it drives dispossession from communities, it drives the housing crisis and it just entrenches inequality. Army Action Team's vision is based on what the community has said they want. When you walk down Town Street you would feel safe, you would feel able to find what you need to feed and clothe your family. You would feel there is choice, vibrancy, opportunity. So it's like how can we look at alternative strategies for urban development that like redistribute wealth downwards through like community wealth building projects, through socially orientated projects, through government development and so I think it's architecture with a smiley face. So it was basically to have a space that felt homely and that was welcoming to everybody in the community, irrespective of your background, your age and your interests, like a, a hub so that even if you had literally no money, you could still come and enjoy something because we provide something that would be accessible and there wouldn't be any stigma behind it. We're actually engaging people from very different backgrounds and circular economy principles. It's just a kind of very gentle introduction to reuse of materials, which is not hidden behind any kind of technical language. And it's just such a simple cycle. That's how you get behavioural change as well. You have to try and get people to move with you. I think the potential's huge. I mean, people want to see this guidance. So, I mean, aside from all the energy and wellbeing agenda, you're filling a gap. It just makes people's life easier and it probably saves them money. So, I mean, who's not going to be on board with that? We knew what the community wanted and we knew how to do it. It was just a matter then of making it happen and in the right way. I think there is a force in every single neighbourhood. So what we offered is we were the catalyst for the community to make things happen. We were facilitating the community to express what they wanted to do. And by doing this, it made the place more authentic and made people come. Because it takes a village. And that's why we call ourselves a village to make things happen. Exactly. We found a real barrier around funders that want to see community-led projects, but they also want to know exactly what you plan to do. Whereas, obviously, for us to be community-led, we don't know. But then all the things that come out of it are completely unpredictable. Belligerence. I think it's just determination, and it's just so impossibly hard to get anything done in the city. It's been like making people feel a bit more positive about where they live. You've got the cafe, job opportunities, a co-working club. I think the proximity of things has helped because you're doing something you love and have a passion for on your doorstep. And it's de-stressing people in a way. And then the change, I suppose, is like Amazing. the smiles. Wow. The difference in the answers now. What do you like about Armour, sense of community? 
that is cracking now. The fact is that the sense of community here is massive, so therefore there's a, a changing. It's a reminder that we're in such an urban space <laughs> that really connects to nature, and I think that is really important that this space has been created so that the community have got somewhere to gather, somewhere to share, somewhere to connect. Some people might look at fabric and go, it's just fabric, but to some people it's their dream. It makes a big difference to people's hearts and their minds. And like if somebody's in the house all the time, it's not good for them. But if they're having something that they're passionate about, it gives them hope. Like there's this underlying network that you brought together through Shed Space. What makes it really We're a small organisation, so we've always had to try and build really strong alliances. So I think there's been something about the trust and the solidarity and the really shared values. I think working with people where you are clearly very aligned on what it is that you think society should be. It's felt as though footwork, it's almost like serendipity in action. Even the approach, I think, has made us realise how different footwork are to other funders generally just from the fact that you're here (laughs) that makes a huge difference and being approachable in terms of what we've got out of it it's made us stop and think about certain things that are really important and really identify things that we think will help us reach our goals so it's been very much like the cool auntie that comes in and understands (laughs) 